And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now Matthew Stafford and the Los Angeles Rams won the Super Bowl on Sunday. But ever since Matthew Stafford even made the Super Bowl a few weeks ago, all I've been seeing on Twitter and social media is how the Rams won this trade between the Lions and themselves and how the Rams just fleeced the Lions, how they got everything that they wanted and how they were the very clear cut winners of this trade and the Lions were the very clear cuts loser so in today's video i want to talk about who really won the trade go over both the benefits and of course the deficits of each side of this trade unbiasedly take a look at what the rams were looking to accomplish with this trade what the lions were looking to accomplish with this trade and which side actually made out with the better profit so with that being the case let's get right into talking about who actually won the trade between the los angeles rams and the detroit lions now if you were unaware about a year ago the los angeles rams decided that jared goff was not their guy they decided that jared goff was not the quarterback that could take them to the promised land was not the quarterback that could take them to the super bowl and win that Super Bowl. So Sean McVay, after having a nice sit down dinner with Matthew Stafford in Los Angeles, because Stafford just happened to be there, they decided to make a blockbuster trade to trade for the 31 year old franchise quarterback. Now the trade looked a little bit like this. Matthew Stafford was sent to the Los Angeles Rams. We ate a lot of his cap space, but in return, we received starting quarterback Jared Goff, who at the end of the season actually looked pretty good for the Detroit Lions. And on top of that, to take on Jared Goff's tremendous salary cap and his tremendous cap hit to the Detroit Lions, who at the time didn't have a great salary cap, the Rams won, ate a little bit of that dead cap for Jared Goff. So the Lions Lions wouldn't have to sign into as big of a contract, but after the Rams also threw in a 2021 third round pick, which eventually turned into Ifiatu Malofanu, who had a really, really solid, productive, and encouraging rookie season. But on top of that, the Lions also got a 2022 first round pick and a 2023 first round selection. And all of that was sent to the Detroit Lions just to receive Matthew Stafford. Now, Matthew Stafford had a really, really good year with the Los Angeles Rams. Matthew Stafford threw for over 4,886 yards, 41 touchdowns to just 17 interceptions. It is one of his more statistical successful years in the NFL, one of his best years statistically in the NFL. He had the most wins of a season in his entire career in his first year in Los Angeles. And of course, Matthew Stafford won his first playoff game, his first conference championship, and his first ever Super Bowl in year one with the Los Angeles Rams. Now with this immediate success, there's a lot of people saying that the Rams are the clear winners and the Lions are the clear losers of this trade. But that is not necessarily true. While it is true that the Detroit Lions were a lesser team without Matthew Stafford, right? They went three, 13 and one. They did not have a very successful season statistically or you know, obviously from the winning side of the game. But that doesn't mean that they lost this trade. The Lions knew the whole time that losing Matthew Stafford would make them a lesser team in the short term, right? Because you don't lose a Super Bowl caliber quarterback like Matthew Stafford. You don't lose a top 10 quarterback like Matthew Stafford and get better as a football team. It just doesn't happen. Matthew Stafford is that good. He's that talented and he raises the play and the level of play from everybody on your roster each and every week. And you don't lose that guy. You don't lose that leader, that talent, and that production and get better immediately immediately as a football team. That's why the Rams traded for him because they would get better immediately. But 
The Lions aren't looking to win immediately. The Lions were never looking to win the Super Bowl in 2021. They're looking to win the Super Bowl in 2024. They're looking to win playoff games in 2023. They're playing the long game here, and that is why the Lions have not lost this game or have not lost this trade with the Los Angeles Rams. Now, as I said, the Lions already spent one of their draft picks in Ifiatu Melifano with the 101st pick of the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, Ifiatu Melifano didn't play a lot his rookie season as he did struggle with injuries but when he did play he started the final four games for the Detroit Lions totaling three passes defended two fumble recoveries and 15 total tackles. The Lions still have two more first round picks to dip into and they still have two more first round picks to add talent to this roster to get back to the playoffs to get to where Matthew Stafford was this year and to get to where they eventually want to be. A lot of people are saying oh because the Rams won the Super Bowl and yes the Super Bowl is the end and is the end all be all goal for NFL teams. If you don't win the Super Bowl you did not have a successful season. It doesn't matter if you made it. It doesn't matter if you have the first overall pick. If you did not win the Super Bowl, your season was not a complete success. You might have had successful moments. Of course, the Bengals, I would still say, had a really, really good season. They made it to the Super Bowl, but they eventually fell short of the ultimate goal, and that was to win the entire thing. And while the Rams were able to do that with this trade, the Lions still have a long way to go before we can officially judge a winner or a loser to this trade. Now, the Lions with those two first round picks have an opportunity to get a lot of different players, right? They have the number two overall pick. They have that opportunity to get a really talented edge rusher or a generational safety in this class. But looking at the Rams selection, looking at the 32nd overall pick in this class, you're still in a really good position to find a multitude of positions that you need to build a dynasty in the NFL, right? At 32, you can still get your franchise quarterback. Lamar Jackson went with the 32 overall selection in the 2019 NFL draft. He's a league MVP. He's taken his team to be a number one seed in the NFL. He is a top quarterback in this league. Top 10, top five, de de definitely not top five, debatable top 10, but he is a former consensus MVP and took his team to the playoffs, has won playoff games, and has had his team as a Super Bowl contender for every year that he has been 100% healthy and on the field, right? You still have the opportunity to get that franchise quarterback. Malik Willis could be there at 32. Sam Howell will likely be there at 32. Those are two guys the Lions work with extensively at the Senior Bowl, and they have a lot of confidence and a lot of trust in. But not only is quarterback available at 32, edge rusher is available at 32, right? Drake Jackson, Jeremiah Johnson are going to be available. Those are guys that are bonus bonafide first round edge rushers and they might not be in the upper echelon they might not put up these statistics of a Kayvon Thibodeau or an Aiden Hutchinson but I guarantee you those guys are franchise pass rushers and those are guys that are going to come in and be day one starters for whoever is lucky enough to draft them in this upcoming class wide receiver is a big one right everybody's saying the wide receiver position is so lacking in the Detroit Lions organization well at 32 you're going to have an opportunity to get a top wide receiver in this class a David Bell a George Pickens. George Pickens has the potential of Calvin Johnson, in my opinion. He's just built like that. He's six foot three, 215 pounds. He's big. He's long. He's great at contested catches. Has good down the field speed. He reminds me of DK Metcalf or Megatron Johnson. He has that upside and has that potential. David Bell is arguably the cleanest wide receiver in this draft class when it comes to route running, when it comes to hands, when it comes to yak, when it comes to just being experienced in the game. And the Lions have an opportunity to draft one of those guys and if they don't sit at 32 they still have more ammunition now to move up in the NFL draft to go get somebody else go get your Nicobe Dean go get your Chris Olave go get your you know Trayvon Burks go get your maybe you trade up for Malik Willis if you're afraid that somebody else is going to take him Whoever you want, the 32 overall pick almost allows you to move anywhere you want in the draft, probably outside the top 15 or so, but that 33 overall selection allows you to get another bona fide starter and allows you to get a potential superstar. 
right? This draft class, this 32nd overall pick could allow the Lions to find their next franchise quarterback, could allow them to find Malik Willis in the in the mid to late first round, right before the Pittsburgh Steelers, or maybe Pittsburgh finds somebody better. Maybe Pittsburgh likes Matt Corral better. Maybe they like Kenny Pickett better, keeping the kid at home. Whatever the case may be, the Lions have an opportunity to draft their franchise quarterback with the Rams selection. And if you have an opportunity to draft a franchise quarterback and get a starting caliber corner and still have another first round pick to go off of, how could the Lions possibly have lost this trade? They haven't even selected anybody yet. If it's three years down the road and Malik Willis is a really, really bad player and you know the 2023 draft pick isn't doing anything either, if he's on the bench consistently or is really injury prone, then you can say, okay, the Rams very clearly won this trade. But the Lions definitely did not lose this trade yet. Yes, the Rams won their Super Bowl. Yes, the Rams got immediately better and they went from playoff contenders to Super Bowl champions with just the simple addition of Matthew Stafford. And obviously, they did a little more than that, right? They added OBJ, they added Von Miller, they added Deshaun Jackson for points in the season. They built around Matthew Stafford. They gave him an elite defense with a solid, respectable running game and they gave him all the weapons in the world. And Matthew Stafford delivered. And he won that Super Bowl. He proved to everybody that he can win that Super Bowl. And the Rams won their end of the trade. I'm not arguing that. The Rams 100% won their end of this trade for the NFL. They won their part of this trade. But that doesn't mean the Lions lost. Just because the Rams won this trade doesn't mean the Lions lost this trade. This trade, in my opinion, is a win-win situation because these two franchises and these two organizations are in very very different situations right now. The Rams had expiring contracts. They had older veterans. They have Aaron Donald who's considering retirement. They have Andrew Whitworth who might retire after this game. They have Jalen Ramsey who's getting older. They have Leonard Floyd who's getting older. They have Matthew Stafford now who's getting older. OBJ is getting older. That whole offensive line is older, but they still won their Super Bowl. They needed to win now. Their Super Bowl window was 2021 2022 and maybe if they draft well in the late rounds 2023 but their veterans are getting older their contracts are getting expensive and they're running out of money so they needed to win now that was their end goal their goal was to win a super bowl within the next two seasons and they accomplished that meaning that they won the trade but the lions goal was not ever to win in 2021 the lions goal was to win in 2022 was to win in the off season of 2021. Their goal is to build through the draft and to build a young, talented roster that can't just go for one Super Bowl, but can go for two, can go for three Super Bowls, a team that can be dominant for a decade instead of just two years. The Lions have long-term aspirations. The Lions have a long-term plan and a long-term vision for this football team, and it all started with the Matthew Stafford trade. So before you go out and say the Rams won this trade and they were the only team to do so, and before you go out and say the Lions lost this trade, Look at what the teams were trying to accomplish because the Lions didn't lose this trade. The Rams might have won, but that doesn't mean the Lions lost. This trade, if all things go well, if the Lions can draft well, which according to Brad Holmes' drafting history, it's going to go pretty well, the Lions can very well still win this trade. The Lions can very easily still be up there, and they might even get more value out of this trade than the Matthew Stafford himself. The Lions in 2025 and 2026, if they're Super Bowl contenders and they go to multiple Super Bowls, the Lions will have won this trade. Because I guarantee you, if the Lions build up a playoff team, if they build up a Super Bowl caliber team, you're going to look back and the whole starting point is going to be that Matthew Stafford trade. If the Lions can win a Super Bowl in the next couple of years, if they can make it to Super Bowl contenders in the next couple of years, it's all going to come back to those two first round picks that were extra from the Los Angeles Rams. The really good hire of Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. It's going to come back to this moment of Matthew Stafford being traded to the Los Angeles Rams. In the long term, I think the Lions can win this trade. If they draft well, if everything goes according to plan, the Lions can win this trade. And I know short term, it might not look like that. Short term, it's going to look like we traded away a Super Bowl caliber quarterback who's only 31 years old and just took a team to the Super Bowl while we regressed significantly offensively. Obviously, we went from like six wins to three wins. 
But that's not the point. The Lions aren't going to win now. They're not a win now team. They're a win for the future. They're a build for the future team. And that's exactly what this trade allows them to do. So with all that being said, that is all for you guys today. I just wanted to touch on this trade because obviously our former quarterback won the Super Bowl and I could not be happier for Matthew Stafford. That leaves the Detroit Lions with two extra first round picks in the next two seasons. And if these picks land, if these picks can hit, the Lions can be very, very good for a very long time. So with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know who you guys think won this trade. Are you on the, the Rams won this trade? The Rams, you know, fleeced the Lions into getting a Super Bowl quarterback and got more out of Stafford than the Lions ever could? Are you on that train or are you on the train of the Lions are building long-term, they have their process, they have their schedule, they're sticking to it, and it's going to work out in the end. Who do you think won this trade short term and who do you think will win this trade long term? I'd be very curious to see what you guys think. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions!